Section 11.6, learning curve. The learning curve method is a bit different from the previous methods discussed because here we won't be calculating the cost, we will be calculating time instead and then based on that time you will be able to calculate the total cost. This, is, this method is based on the observation that the time to complete a task, repetitive task, they have to be repetitive tasks, will decrease at an approximate constant rate whenever the production is doubled. Okay, so this, is, this was mainly developed for task manufacturing or process industries. So if you go to slide number 10, here uh, you have the link to Toyota Texas, which is the manufacturing plant. Uh, it's right before getting to San Antonio. I highly recommend that you, whenever you have the chance, you stop by and visit them. You may have to make a reservation online. I'm not sure if they take walk-ins, but it's very interesting to see how they work. So they have different stations and then they have the, the people working uh, on those stations. And yes, it will be repetitive tasks. Okay, so let's go back. Uh, yes, the, the model estimates that we have here in this formula means that it will you will be calculating not the total time or not the average time, but the time to complete the nth unit. So you would have the time to complete the second unit, the third unit, fourth, etc. Okay, and then we're going to have something called the learning rate. So if you see that the completion time reduction is 10%, it means that the learning rate will be 90. If the completion time reduction is 20%, then the learning rate will be 20. You will always have 100% between the, the reduction in completion time and the learning rate. The learning rate will be given to you in the problem. Okay, so we have, and again, the formula the time to complete the nth unit would be equal to the time to complete the first unit times the unit number raised to s which is the learning curve slope parameter. If we go to the next slide you have the formula to calculate s. Just a heads up the s will always be a negative because it's decreasing and it's going to be a decimal number as well. Okay, so you must get a negative decimal from uh, this formula right here. You will have the log of the learning rate okay, as a decimal, so if it's 90%, you put 0.90, divided by the log of 2. And then you're going to plot it. Okay, so we will be focusing on the curve, so it will be the arithmetic method, not the log-log. And let's see where all of these uh, numbers are coming from. Okay, so for this, I'm going to uh, start a new page of notes. And this is going to be for slide 11-34. Okay, so we're going to write the instructions, plot TN for the learning rate of 90% and the time to complete the first unit is 60 minutes. Okay. Based on what we have on the slide, we have units and then we have the, the completion time. It says that the first unit will take 60 minutes. Okay, to graph this, you can actually select any numbers that you want. You don't have to go 1, 2, 3, or 1, 10, 20. The recommendation here is that you have at least six points, more or less, so that the graph 
it's easier to trace and also that you double the amounts so that way you'll see the reduction in time okay because remember it only happens when the production doubles so here I'm gonna have one two four eight sixteen thirty two okay but it will also depend on how many units you have because you may get 100 units so it would be better if you keep on going um, or you may have 200 here on slide 1135 it tells you that the learning curve in the first uh, blue sentence that the learning curve estimates are best for smaller lots so up to 200 units you'll be fine okay because after that if you have very large uh, lots then the continued learning may not happen okay so that being said, we have, uh, we're doubling the amounts for demonstration purposes. And then let's calculate the time for the second unit. So first of all, we have the formula. The time to complete the nth unit would be T1 times N to the S. And then if we want to calculate S, it would be the log of the learning rate divided by the log of 2. Okay, so this would be the log of 90, point 0.90, because it's 90 percent, and then divided by the log of 2. Okay, so here we're going to get, remember it must be negative, and decimal 152. We will be using this in our exponent. Now let's calculate T2. So for T2 we said that T1 is 60. N will be 2 and then we're going to raise 2 to the minus 0 0.152. Make sure that you're only raising the number to s, not the whole thing. Okay, so with this being said, we're going to get 60 times 0 0.9. This gives us 54. So that means that this is going to take 54 minutes. Then, let's calculate the next one, T4. T1 takes 60 minutes, and it's going to be the fourth unit to the minus 0 0.152. This is going to give us 60 times 0 0.81, giving us 48.6. And you can notice, let me just, as a reference here, that from here to here to here, all of these, it's uh, you're doubling production from here to here. Okay, we said that we must have a reduction in time of 10% since we have 90 here. 10% of 60 is 6. So 60 minus 6 will give you 54. Then 10% of 54 would be 5.4. So if we do 54 minus 5.4, we will get 48.6. Okay. And then let's assume that you use the same formula to calculate uh, the eighth unit, or you just calculate it with the 10% reduction. Uh, here you would get 43.7, then 39.4, then 35.4. So just keep on going. So all of them will show a 10% reduction in time. Okay, now let's graph this. Okay, 
in our curve. So this is my vertical axis. Okay, and then the horizontal. We will have the time in the vertical axis. So for the time, let me go up to 60. We have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. And then again, this is time in minutes. And then here at the bottom, I'm going to go all the way up to 40. I'm going to have 10, 20, 30, and 40. And it's going to be units. And okay. Let's graph the first point. Okay, so the first point is 1 and 60. So let's just say that 1 is somewhere around here and 60. So I put my first point there. Then we have 2 and 54. So let's say that 2 is somewhere around there and 54 somewhere here. Then 4 and 48.6. 4 and 48.6, more or less here. Then we have 8 and 43.7. Say it's somewhere around there. Then 16, let's say that there's a 16. And 39.4, so almost 40. And then we have 32 and 35.4. You should get a curve. Maybe it's not going to be as smooth as we want it to be. And then we just trace the curve on top of our point.